I was always willing to do anything that my older homies were, were trying to put me on. Hey, crimes, let's go do this. Hey, crimes, let's break into this house. Hey, crimes, let's go get a strap from this house. Let's do this car, whatever it was. I was always down to do it, so they called me criminal. Mm -hmm. Both of my parents are immigrants. They come to this country with a dream and a goal to, to make their lives better and chase their dreams and do everything that they couldn't. And uh, my father crossed with his best friend. His name was Antonio and they made it to the Rio Grande River and he passed away. His, his best friend didn't make it. So my father ended up making it and uh, he met my mother. My mother also came here not knowing the language, just speaking only Spanish. I seen the street life young. It was brought to my front door, literally brought into my home. Seeing, uh, you know, my brother's friends were involved in gangs, you know, doing doing things that they shouldn't have done around the child. Seeing, uh, you know, police come in and try to raid the house. I remember very clearly my sister grabbing me and running out of the house and hitting the corner and a dude having a gun in our face. And my sister screaming and some dude like rushed him. And my, my sister and us jumped in the car and her best friend got shot as we were being in the car. So we were screaming, blood was all over me. As we're driving out here, my sister, that's my brother Michael, stop, my brother Michael. And like some dudes are stomping on my brother. So that was very like something that I seen as a child, like all in front of me and all in slow motion. So it was brought to me. It wasn't something that I like really sought after. It was something that it was influenced by, by my siblings. My sister was into the street life, partying heavy. My brothers were into the street life, partying heavy and they brought it to me. Each one of my siblings left like immediately at 18, if not younger, 17, 16. So I go outside in the streets and it's pretty much the same continuation of what I seen from my brothers and, and my sister in the house. And basically now it's a new crowd, it's new people. And now I have to fit in with them. The sense of camaraderie and, and like friendship that you have within a group of people, it makes you feel like family. It makes, them, makes you feel like, you know, a brotherhood, like, like really closeness, but whether you're, you're having a good time, drinking a beer, maybe taking your first hit of weed on the block, having a good time, making jokes with each other, you know that that's all a good vibe. But the moment you see a car hit the corner with the lights off, everybody like, oh shit, starts hitting behind something, grabbing stuff for protection. You start hearing gunshots. That's how you know it's not right. That's how you start feeling in your heart. This is a good family vibe, but something isn't right. Why do those people over there want to kill us just because we're hanging out right here smoking and drinking? Now, because they did that, now we're gonna, you know, do the same thing, jump in our cars, retaliate, wait until they're hanging out and, and catch them slipping at their weakest point when they're just having a great time. Now we're gonna come and give them the same thing. And it's kind of like, that's something you go to sleep at night, no matter what age you are, and know that that's not right. You know what I'm saying? I was locked up a total of nine times before I hit 18. So I spent pretty much my whole juvenile life from 11, 12 years old until I turned 18 behind bars. I ended up getting locked up a couple months later in a whole different situation. And one of the main people when they led me into the juvenile hall was like, okay, Harris, show Garcia around. It was like one of my worst enemies. This dude, like one of my boys stabbed his boy. Like it was like really bad. So this guy's like, yeah, I got you now. I mean, you know, so we're like, he's sitting there threatening me the whole time where he's supposed to be showing me the program. It just was, you know, the way that we're raised, the way we're taught, you just had to do your thing. So I just took flight on them in there, in which basically I attacked them. And uh, when they were trying to pepper spray me and stop me, like I, I got like, I attacked the staff too. So they put me in confinement for a little while. So that was my first time they put me in. I think it was three weeks because I hit one of these guards. Putting me in this little room like that 23 hours a day was like really just torture. It was like there was nothing to do at all. And that, that, that was my first time, 13 years old. There's nothing you could do. You don't have no books, you don't have no tea, you know, nothing, nobody to talk to. So I just start thinking to myself, how can I kill time in here? Because time's going by very, very slow. So I'll be like, okay, too short. Let me think about too short. He's got his album, Born to Mac. Intro. Without a doubt, and I started going through the whole album. I'm like, oh shit. And the next thing you know, I went through the whole album. And I'm like, that's an hour down. Cool. Let me think of another album of his. And then the next thing you know, I'm like, just going crazy. And then over time, I'm like, you know what? Why am I 
rapping all these other people's lyrics. I spend so much time in here. Why don't I just come out with my own? So when I come out, I can show my homies some little bit of lyrics, at least something I could do. The very first song that I recorded on my, on my own, it was a solo song. It was called Maniac in Black. Somehow when I hit the rap game, it was like somebody gave me a beat and I was like, man, let me see how those old lyrics would do. So I wrote those when I was like 15, 16. And it was the first song that I dropped my introduction to the game. And it pretty much started a fire in the streets of Southern California when I started. I would say the, the seed of me wanting to change, being planted young, was me having my first son. I had my first son when I was 15 years old. They, I had uh, some very serious charges and some cases that they were holding over my head that I was about to do double digits and be gone for a very long time. And uh, due to the fact of, of my son being born and, and him being brought into the court and the judge seeing him and, and that touching the judge's heart, he found favor in me and, and I got lucky. So. I told myself I had to make a change. I just didn't know how that change was gonna come. Being in the street life still, doing what I normally do, car show pulls up, hey, criminal, what you doing this weekend? I'm gonna go soup you up with a couple of the homies. All oh, good, what's up, what we doing? We're gonna pull up at this car show, represent. All right, all cool. We go to the car show, end up meeting the right people, end up meeting a local artist by the name of Mr. Capone. So it just so happened to be fate. Right when I hit the studio and dropped my first song with them was when he secured his deal with Universal Records. So I got signed right at the same time. So it was pretty much fate and it was a street life that made it happen. It wasn't me trying to do good. It wasn't me going out trying to search for, for a job or anything. It was just me going and rolling with my homeboys, jumping in the Regal, had a tech nine on me. I remember my homies like, nah, homie, you're not taking that tech with me today. I'm like, homie, I remember being on my homie like, why are you acting like a bitch? I was like, we always strapped up. Why are you acting like that? Well, that was fake too, because we got pulled over right before we hit that car show and that cop searched the hell out of that whole car. And I would have never made it to meet him and I would have never made it to the rap game if my homie didn't let me take that. that day. So at the end of the day, you know, they're like, hey, criminal, your new album just came out. Why don't you jump on, on this little tour with us and roll to this Portland car, car show? So I went to the Portland car show and having people screaming my name as soon as they see me coming up, going crazy, literally girls like shaking, having me autograph, big old line. I mean, this is really happening. Like there's really kids and people coming out of their homes and standing in line with these posters and wanting to do anything they can just to shake your hand. And I'm thinking a couple weeks ago, I was just in jail. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this is really something that could take off and, and do something positive. Successful. I went home with a couple thousand dollars in my pockets, not for selling drugs, but for selling my product of, of music. And, and that felt good to do that all in one day. I would see uh, kids all over the country reciting my lyrics, uh, coming up to the shows, wearing the same jersey I wear on my cover, wearing blue rags just like I was wearing blue bandanas, coming up saying, like, yeah, homie, I, I'm like you, I'm from Cali too, I represent. And it's like, wow. Just because of my album cover, I'm sitting here with the Dodger jersey and a blue rag around my hat. Now every state I go to, people are showing up like that. It's like, wow, this is really an influence more than just music. It's a, it's fashion. It's everything. Like they, it's a lifestyle. They really want to try to be like emulate this. Like they look up to us heavily, you know. And it, and it really opened my eyes. The next thing you know, you know, you go into these shows and instead of you hearing like, hey, your music's dope. Hey, you got dope stuff, which I hear a lot. I started hearing like, hey, homie, your music's gangster. I just smoked the enemy to, that, to one of your songs last night. Or I just shot up, lit up some of my rivals. I just did this. I pulled a lick to this. So I started hearing this so many times and that, that starts being like, you know, more implanted in my brain as I'm hitting different cities. I'm like, wow, there's something not right here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm being blessed with this gift to make music and I'm being blessed with this influence. And so far, what have I really done? It made me reflect on myself like, man, if I rewind all my music, what's there? It's representing, gangbanging, shooting, nothing but negativity. What I started seeing, it was a, a, a magnification on my life happening, how I grew up to a whole new generation. And I was like, you know what? Someone's got to step up and speak on this because nobody's saying it. Nobody ever says it. Nobody's highlighting it, no one's letting it be known. So if it's never letting it be known, if nobody speaks on it, it's just gonna keep on happening, keep on happening, keep on happening. If it's a light, then let it grow. From the dark to the light, that's the, that's the whole purpose of this redemption. Uh, I've seen some really bad things in my life. 
making this album was something that was part of the evolution of that change. Um, I started creating music with a very talented producer. His name is Jay Hamlin, Kitchen Beats. And uh, a producer's job is to try to bring the best out of you. He asked me, he sat me down just like we're talking now. And he said, what do you want to do with this album? What are you trying to make? What are you trying to, you know, sonically, like, like put a vision in, in, in their ears, you know? And I explained to him when I'm explaining to you how I wanted to make a change, how I felt I was at a crossroads in my life, how I, I was feeling like this responsibility, exactly how I explained. And he said, man, it sounds like you're 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 at a point of redemption, you know? And, and he just started making this rhythm and he started singing these beautiful lyrics of out of the dark into the light. And he just came up with this whole dope thing. And it just felt like, wow, that's it. And after we recorded that first song, I just knew it in my heart. It just felt right. I was like, man, I'm gonna make my whole album redemption and we're gonna go in like this. Yeah, so we started this mutual respect movement a few years back. My brother Cam, he uh, has a heavy influence over his community and his culture. And uh, he's connected heavily with the Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan. He reached out to me so we could bridge the gap between our cultures. We started this black and brown movement called Mutual Respect. On this album, we have one that we clicked up together and we made a real, real big one. It's called The Crown and it's featuring the game. And uh, I got Cam on it. And so we're just keeping this respect going and showing that it's okay for us to make this music together, for us to stand together and not be bloodshed, for us to be in the same room and not want to kill each other, you know? And that's something that is deeply rooted since we are children, you know? And, and now it's finally being broken through music. So many big things coming on this album, Redemption. I have some huge features. Um, we got a new track with Wiz Khalifa that, that we just did with Perps of 808 Mafia. I've got my boy G Perico on some stuff, uh, some street stuff. I've got some music that's really, really heavy, hard hitting to the heart, some stuff called Heaven Knows. Um, my Latin American Dream. It's just a lot of good stuff on the album. It's a well rounded project, double disc album, almost 40 songs. And uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody on there. Instead of seeing. Hey, I just went and smoked somebody to your music last night. Hey, I just went and put in work. I'm seeing the complete opposite. Now I'm seeing kids say, hey, what you said in your song, so-and-so, now I'm seeing it. Man, my big homie tried to do me dirty. And you know what? You're right, criminal. I'm going to make my own decision. I'm going to think for myself. Or, hey, you know, I changed this because of this. And I don't want to pick up a gun now. I want to pick up a camera like you said in your song. I don't, hey, it's nothing but positivity now. With a lot of the, the lessons that I've learned, I see a positive side in it. I see, even though that we've went through the negativity, it's like going through a fire. Going through a fire eventually purifies a human. I truly feel that everything that we go through is for a reason. It makes us stronger, it builds our character. It's gonna make the next generation stronger and know not to go down that route and, and go down that path. But it, it's gonna definitely take a generation to be leaders to show that, you know what I'm saying? Like all other cultures and, and, and races and, and backgrounds have done that. They've had their leaders, they've had their moments of breakthroughs. I truly feel that we still have not I still feel that, you know, as Latinos, our culture, we still have a different mentality and we just haven't reached that level of consciousness yet. And, and, and I don't feel like it's very far away. And I think that we're about to make a, a evolutionary change. So my message to the youth out there, to a young Mr. Criminal, if you're listening, stay true to yourself, man. No matter what you're going through, it's going to be all right. You might be going through some dark times, you might be going through some fires, but there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Stay true to yourself, believe in yourself, look around, open your eyes. The world's a beautiful place. Don't, don't believe that you're stuck where you're at and that's all it's going to be. There's a whole life waiting for you. No matter what you do, don't let no doubters say that you won't make it because they told me I would never be nowhere. I was supposed to be doing double digits. They said I'd be dead or in jail at this stage of my life. And I'm here, so thank God. Let's keep God first. So check it out. I want everybody to know we got the new website, mrcriminal.com. It's a lifestyle, it's a movement, it's a culture. So I want you guys to check it out. We're going to be giving you guys some exclusive behind the scenes subscriptions. There's going to be definitely added value that you guys can't get on regular social media. And uh, I want you guys to stay tuned. We're going to have some exciting stuff coming for you. Subscriptions coming soon. MrCriminal.com.